you hate the most about the music industry? Uh, Barnell Hill. That's what I'm gonna call this shit. I hate this Barnell Hill shit that's going on in the industry. Man, cause a lot, it's a lot, you know what I'm saying? And I'm gonna break down Barnell Hill for you right now. Barnell Hill, episode of Martin, somewhere in the 90s, you know what I'm saying? Barnell Hill like, oh, you my partner. Uh, you can come up to my house. We can do this, we can do that. Oh, uh, I fucks with you. I, I don't fuck with it, I fucks with your shit either. Cause that's, if for one, it's borderline sound like some fuck gay shit. And how you fucks with a nigga? Say you mess with me, or you want to help me, or let's do business together. You know what I'm saying? This Barnell Hill shit. If you don't want to associate with somebody, or you don't feel comfortable around an individual, don't fuck with them. Don't sell no nigga no dream. Don't say we're gonna do this and we're gonna turn up or all this other. I don't. Nigga, I'm from the '90s, nigga. I was born in the early '80s, Jack. All that that shit, that pump faking. I don't fuck with it. Dude. Even some DJs, they, they big Barnell Hill motherfuckers, I fuck with you. They gonna spin you and you not in the club, you're not getting spent again, sir. So, you know, that's all the thing. Barnell Hill. Top three things you need in the studio. <sighs> Top three things I need in the studio. Man, I just need the studio. Cause like I ain't a dope head, I ain't a druggie. I don't need to be fucked up every day. I just need to be motivated to go. Like a lot of niggas hit me and they want they want songs and verses. Bro, I don't be in the studio like that. When I go, I go for real. And it's just all about me being motivated to go. Now I can have my badass bitch in the studio with me. That's motivation, you know what I'm saying? Once shit gets slow, I can get some head, go back in the booth and you know, drop some drop some solid shit for a nigga. Other than that, man, hey, let me get the engineer, the whole setup, and we all we ready to go and some money. Craziest studio story, if you have one. <laughs> oh man, man, it's too big. It sounded like a good one, and I didn't even hear the details. No, it was the same <laughs> one you asked Blue about. <laughs> He was like, man, I can't say that one, but let me think of another one. <laughs> okay, I can't think of one. I can't think of one that's cool. This was cool. This was crazy. Fuck. Man, listen. All right. Two of my favorite people, man, in this story right here. I'm, I'm going to sum it down real quick. Craziest studio experience ever. All right. Free Gucci, man. The recipe to my OG Dirt. Love you, cuz. All right, listen. My OG partner, Dirt. This nigga always drunk. And this nigga might do whatever, you know what I'm saying? He's drunk OG, 50 some years old. Rest in peace, he just passed away. All right, he's a super crip nigga. He fuck with everybody. He OG been locked up all his life. Real ass nigga, east side crip nigga. So we in the studio, we got patchworks. We rent the bitch out the A room for a month. And uh, so Gucci, he had like the B room or another room, but it was basically like Gucci crew. And then the BMF crew, we in the studio every day, you know what I'm saying? OG Dirt, he fucking with everybody. He don't really know who no rappers and nobody. He don't know who nobody is. But if he hear your name, he gonna look you up and check you out. Long story short, uh, most of Gucci homeboys is Bloods. Most of the BMF niggas is Crips. So OG Dirt, chilling in the studio, the Blood homies got on their rags. And all of a sudden, they been doing this every day because this is, this is their lifestyle. These niggas is G's, you know what I'm saying? So we all kicking amongst each other. Ain't no motherfucker. I'm not about to kill you because you's a fucking blood, nigga. We all get money. We all black. It's this unity, you dig? So Dirt just goes into at any given time when he gets drunk. It's like this nigga's from Vietnam and flash back into the war. He flashes back into fucking 90s gang war shit. And he's upstairs in the pool area at... Gucci man and them trying to fight this nigga with a pool stick talking about fuck you niggas wearing red nigga. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? They like, Gucci like, man, oh boy, I don't bitch you every day, nigga. I see you every single day. But OG is drunk and he like, I don't know none of y'all. Y'all trying to ambush me. Y'all trying to kill me. I'm from motherfucking East Side Crip, nigga. So shit get crazy. Gucci and them like, man, listen. OG built as a motherfucker. These niggas like, built like Debo. 
They like, man, damn, man, we don't want to knock home out, man. What the fuck, man? Somebody come get this nigga. Because Gucci ain't no hoe and he ain't no little nigga. But OG trying to fight everybody. He don't give a fuck about shit. The nigga like, cuz on the set, I'm going to kill everybody in here. Man, we had to go get this nigga, man, talk to this nigga. Then he was like, oh, that Gucci, man. This nigga just snapped back into reality. Oh, that's Gucci, man. Oh, that's my dog. I'm like, man, this shit crazy, man. What's the realest song you ever wrote so far in your whole collection? Man. <clears throat> All right. One of the realest records that I got in my catalog is called Me Afghanistan. And it's unreleased. It's actually, I just kind of released it to one of my homeboys, Devin James. He wrote a book about the Ferguson incident. The book's called Inside Ferguson, and the song is called Me Afghanistan. It's really detailed about what's going on in the hood and the communities and the police killing brothers and we telling the police peace and all this shit, and then niggas still killing each other over other shit. Like, this shit, what the fuck? You know what I'm saying? So, it's a real record, you know what I'm saying? It's a conscious record. Uh, probably very few that I got in my catalog. I got, probably got about 20 of them. But that's it. What are your keys to success? The keys to success, my key to success is not trying to please everybody. You know, um, that right there I take you into <laughs> a whole lot of stress. You know what I'm saying? You just really got to, you know, my three key words is pray, focus, and grind. You know what I'm saying? I carry that throughout my day, you know, and not trying to please everybody because everybody don't want you to do everything. So, you know, big situation.